Good afternoon. As we continue to consider the Old Testament prophecies of Christ's coming that Handel used in his musical masterpiece, The Messiah, we come today to what is probably the best known of all, Isaiah chapter 9. It's well known not only because it's one of the more familiar parts of Handel's Messiah, but because we hear these words so many times at this time of year. At our church, at least, we hear it every Christmas Eve service. Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. So let's look at it a little bit more closely. Through Isaiah, God gives us a promise. The passage begins with a promise to inspire our hope. Light will come to those in darkness. Joy will come to those who suffer. Isaiah compares it to the joy of harvest for farmers or to the joy of a victory in battle for warriors. He reminds the nation of a time when they were under oppression by their Midianite invaders and how God shattered the enemy's power so the people could be free. Isaiah speaks of a time when weapons of war will be destroyed because they're no longer needed. All of these promises will come true because of a child who will be born, a son who will be given. This child will be a true son of David, who is the founder of Israel's royal house, and he will establish a righteous government of peace and justice. His will be a reign that will have no end, and it will all be possible because of the power of God. In the midst of this prophecy, we hear that the child is given four names. Now, in a king's coronation ceremony in those days and in that region of the world, the king was given new names to describe what kind of king he will be, or at least what kind of king the people hope he will be. And so by looking at these names, we gain insight into who our true and righteous king is. In other words, these four names teach us about our Lord Jesus Christ. The first is Wonderful Counselor. He is the one who gives good advice, good guidance and instruction. Now the challenge for us is to accept Christ's counsel instead of walking in our own ways because they seem so much better to us in our opinion. The challenge is for us to follow the guidance of our wonderful counselor even when or maybe I should say, especially when we don't know why we should. Counselor, by the way, is the title that Christ gave to the Holy Spirit at his Last Supper. And so we know that the Spirit is Christ's continuing guidance for us today. Second, he is called Mighty God. Well, that's a bold declaration. In case we didn't pick up the hint already, we're not talking about some ordinary king who will come along to fulfill these promises. Now, up to this point, we could have imagined that the prophecy was about some wonderful human king who was about to come. But we know that only God can accomplish what this prophecy proclaims. Only God can fulfill the hopes that we have. So what are your hopes? What hopes do you carry that you treasure within your heart. Offer them to the mighty God because he and he alone can fulfill that hope. Third, he's called the everlasting father. Now in the traditional language of that time, the king was seen as the father over the nation. A little bit like how we Americans say that George Washington is the founder of our country, the father of our nation. Now, to our Christian ears, hearing him being called the Everlasting Father should be a reminder of something else as well. He is a member of the Trinity, the one God in three persons. We worship Jesus Christ as God the Son, but we know that the Son's identity is intrinsically connected with the identity of God the Father. They share the same being or substance. Repeatedly in John's Gospel, Jesus says that the Father and I are one, 
Where you find me, you find the Father. And fourth, we call him the Prince of Peace. This is a reminder of that promise earlier in the prophecy that warfare will come to an end. But peace is more than the absence of war or the absence of violence. Peace is even more than the absence of the hatred and fear that can lead to warfare and violence. For you see, peace is more than just the absence of something, as though the slate is wiped clean and blank. No, warfare and violence are removed in order to make room for peace, for wholeness, health, joy, harmony, the fullness of life that God intends for us, the fullness of life that God desires for us. And is made possible through this child whose birth we are preparing to celebrate once more. Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus Christ, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we celebrate that the prophecy has now been fulfilled in your birth, that we know the hope and the joy that can come from your glorious reign. So come and rule in our hearts, Lord. Truly be the Lord of our lives, that we may experience the peace that comes only from you. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later. <laughs>